Here's how we make soap in the most basic form. It only requires a few ingredients, which are lye, fats, and oils. When these are combined, it starts the soapification process. What that means is it's a chemical reaction that generates heat and turns the fats and oils into a hard soap. We're going to take you step by step through this whole process. Today we're making peppermint rosemary soap. This is our very favorite recipe. We use it every day, it's in all of our showers, and I'll have the ingredients listed below for you. What we use for this recipe is lye, olive oil, avocado, coconut oil, castor oil, and shea butter. These are my favorite oils that I use. They're organic. You don't have to use organic. You can buy non-food grade. These are all easily found locally or on Amazon. Um, these are just the ones that I love and have used for quite a while. We use peppermint oil to scent it, and then we use the rosemary for color and also for an exfoliant. In a future video, we're going to show you how you can create your own custom recipes. These are the tools that are required when you're making soap. We have a scale that we use to weigh out all the ingredients in our recipes. We have gloves and goggles that we use uh, when we're mixing the lye, an immersion or stick blender. We have a glass measuring cup, ladles and spoons, and a few different size metal pots. We also have soap molds. The soap molds come in all different shapes and sizes. These are for individual bars. And then we also have a soap mold loaf. Most of this equipment that we have here, we purchased at the thrift stores or yard sales because we wanted to have dedicated soap making equipment. We'll put a list and links to um, a few of these items in the details below. And we'll also, in an upcoming video, show you how you can make your own soap mold. <laughs> Darn it. Also, in an upcoming video, we're going to show you how you can make your own soap mold. All right, let's get started. The first step is to weigh out your water. Once you set your container on the scale, be sure to tear out your scale before adding the water. We like to use distilled water because our city water is highly chlorinated. Be sure to have your favorite helper wear their gloves and goggles when mixing the lye. These next steps involve the lye. Be sure to tear out your scale before adding your lye to your container. Now you're ready to mix. Take it slow and always follow safety guidelines for mixing lye. It's super important to remember that you always add the lye to the water. Never add water to lye. That will cause a dangerous situation that could injure you. We like to break up the lye mixing into thirds. You'll see the solution start to outgas as you mix it, so be careful not to breed those fumes. Now that we have combined the lye with the water, this mixture is really going to start heating up. That's why we start with this step first to allow plenty of time for it to cool down. Once you're done mixing the lye, move the solution to a safe spot out of the way while you continue weighing out all the rest of your ingredients. Here we placed our pot on the scale and we made sure to tear the scale out. Now we're ready to weigh the oils. You will want to have your recipe nearby so that you can reference the amounts needed for each oil. You will find that weighing out the liquid oils is pretty easy. Be sure to tear your scale before adding each oil. When weighing out the coconut oil, be mindful as you add it to the pot. 
The solid oils tend to get to their weight faster and you don't want to add too much and then have to fish it out. Now the shea butter was by far the hardest to get out of the container. It's pretty thick and will definitely require some muscle, but its benefits are well worth the work. So now that we have all of our oils measured out, we need to melt them down. And the shea butter is the one that takes the longest to melt down. We have it on a very low heat. And the reason we're doing that is because we don't want it to get too hot because we need to bring the lye solution and the oil temperature to be about 100 so that we can combine them together. Now we're going to weigh out our essential oils to scent our soap and also prepare our exfoliant. For this batch of soap, we're using fresh rosemary from our garden. After gathering the rosemary, we pull the leaves from the stems and then we're going to rinse them and pat them dry. We want to make sure that they're dry so that they don't grow mold in the soap. After we pat them dry, we're going to spread them out on a cookie sheet and place them in a 200 degree oven for about 20 minutes. So now that we have the rosemary dried, we're gonna put it into this coffee grinder and grind it up to a fine consistency to add to our soap. We lined our soap mold with parchment paper so that it will easily release from the mold. Once the lye solution and the oils are the same temperature, mix the lye solution into the oils. Using the immersion blender, emulsify the mixture. Be sure to check every 10 to 15 seconds to see if the mixture has started to thicken on the end of the blender. If it has, you have reached trace. Now it's time to add the essential oils and exfoliants. Once these are added, continue to blend until everything is combined. Once combined, this is where things are going to start moving faster and you're ready to pour your soap into the soap mold. Don't leave any behind. Use a scraper to get all the soap out of the pan and into your mold. Now take the scraper to smooth out the top of the mold, taking extra time to press as much as you can into the corners to get rid of any voids. Once the top of your soap mold is all smoothed out, you can stop right there or you could get creative. I like to give my soap some character by gently taking a fork and dragging it across the top of the soap. This creates a fun edge. Now that the soap is in the mold, it's time to cover it up and wait. We put a piece of cardboard over the top to protect it, and then we tightly cover it with a few towels. This will allow the soap to slowly start to cool down and begin to harden. So you're supposed to leave the soap alone for about 24 hours, but I always have to take a little sneak peek I blame it on the, I need to check the temperature and make sure that it's doing its thing. But if you feel the, the mold, it's warm. If you notice the soap has kind of changed color, it was a orangish hue and now it's more of a green. And the soap itself is sitting at about 107 degrees. So this is turning out real nice. So I'm gonna cover it back up for anybody who knows I was here and we'll check it in the morning. Okay, here we are 24 hours later and it's time to get the soap out of the mold and start trimming it up and cutting it into bars. 
Um, the box that I made here has a bottom that slides out. And if you heard that, that was the soap dropping through the box. So I usually just lift it up, put my box back together. And then I carefully handle the parchment paper because it's a lot of work getting the parchment paper into the box and making it cut to fit. So I use it, I've been using it for two years. So just bear with me while I salvage my parchment paper. Here is the completed loaf of soap. Now we're gonna go ahead and trim it down into one inch bars. This loaf happens to be 12 inches wide. So we're gonna cut it into one inch bars. We'll give us 12 different bars. But before we cut it, I wanna go ahead and trim down all of this area on top that's kind of like slag. It's easier to trim down when it's one big loaf versus trying to trim it down after it's been cut into bars. All right, so I'm just gonna trim off these random edges. It's not have to be completely straight or anything. I'm just trying to make it so that when we get a finished product, it looks halfway decent. And the soap is still relatively soft right now. Uh, you'll feel the oils, whereas in six weeks or after it's been cured, you won't feel those oils anymore. They'll start to dry out. Now what I do, and I I'm a woodworker by hobby. As I grab my trusty old speed square and I set it up here and I take a pick tool and I start to scribe out every inch. I'll do this one this way. Maybe you can see it a little better. just follow that line across and what I'm doing here is I'm giving myself an index so that when I cut the bars and I'll I'll do it on both sides but this way when I cut the bars I've got a better guide if you will on where to go and where to cut so they turn out relatively straight again it's soap we're not gonna take this load and sell it to Walmart we're gonna give it to friends but I do want it to be somewhat uniform. Okay, now we'll repeat this process on the other side. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's kind of sticky. So it makes like a smacking noise when you separate it. Again, I'm just using the guide I created on both sides just to keep me uniform. So the final step is to get this soap on a rack so that it can cure for the next four to six weeks. Now I've grabbed soap at four weeks without any real concern with how it was going to react. It was all good soap, but I have noticed that the longer that you let it cure, the, the harder it is in the bathroom. If you grab it prematurely before using it, it tends to disintegrate or if you will dissolve quicker. So we just put it on a rack here, giving some equal space all the way around. And again, four to six weeks. And then after that four to six weeks, it would be in your best interest to put it into some kind of airtight container. And that allows the fragrance and the thing to continue from drying out. I wanted to point out, I don't know if you can see it, but when you compare, this is an old bar that we cured probably six weeks. We probably made this probably eight or 12 weeks ago but you can definitely see there's a difference. Some of the dimensions are pretty much the same, but you can also feel the difference. The fresh bar has a lot of moisture in it that still needs to evaporate out as it's curing. So here's the finished soap. We're really happy with how it turned out. 
It smells amazing, it has great lather, and it's super creamy. We are very excited to hear how you do with your soap recipes, so be sure and leave us a comment below. We have some great videos in the works. Our bees are coming, we're going to have a ranch tour, and a few more soap videos. So if you don't want to miss out on any of our upcoming videos, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. We're going to leave a list of all the products used in our video in the description below. If you liked our video, be sure to give us a thumbs up. We'd love to connect with you, so if you have any questions, you can leave those below as well. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.